Retiring Well, brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring Well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring Well, plan to retire well. All right, welcome to Retiring Well. Listen, in this week, I'm really excited. I've, I've got a gentleman I've had on the show before named Bill Malik. He has a company called Michigan Business Advisors. Now, he's in the business of helping businesses sell business. Um, he does appraisals, helps them with valuation, walks them through the whole process, connects uh, uh, the seller with the buyers and vice versa. And uh, you know, I've had him on the show. We've talked about that. But um, we got talking um, since we did that last show. And Bill, you've started to take a different kind of shift now, right? Through, you know, as we've been kind of going through this pandemic, um, I mean, you used to have a previous life doing uh, Chapter 11s, am I not right? That's, uh, well, yeah, I used to do a lot of Chapter 11s, uh, still do a, a few. Um, the local attorneys here start, you know, pretty much are bringing me out of retirement for that, um, especially with this new Chapter 5 that they've got. Uh, it's a new law that they put on the books. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm doing a few of those now and are helping uh, businesses in the right direction for that kind of uh uh, scenario if necessary. All right. Well, I want to, that's why I wanted to have you on the show because I want to talk about that. You know, we've had this pandemic, you know, it, it's it, the, the, the questions out there, how is this recovery going to happen? You know, what's the economic impact going to be to a lot of these small businesses? Are they going to reopen? What, what's that look like? Right. I fear that um, there's probably going to be uh, much more not reopening as, as we might think. Um, I, I think you're, you're probably right. There's a lot of folks that are, um, at least from what uh, I'm hearing from people who call me, is that um, some of the older folks who are getting ready for retirement within one or two years are saying, you know, is it really worth it to me to reopen and, and try to restart my business? And it's a lot of work uh, at the end of the day to reboot a business because um, it's like starting all over again. Uh, except for your, you know, you do have your goodwill that people will come back, but it's still difficult. It's still a lot of work and it's just added, added pressure on the owners and there's a lot more for them that they need to think about when they do reopen their business that, that they didn't have to think about before. So uh, yeah, I think it's, I, I think you're probably correct. Some won't reopen, some of them will be so upside down with debt that they, they won't really know what to do and, 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 uh, you know, bankruptcy is, may be a good option for them at this point. Yeah, now I know there's been a lot of stimulus money the feds have thrown at this, but, you know, I dare say that, you know, some of that money didn't reach all the businesses. So there's going to be a lot of those small businesses, I'm sure, that fell through the cracks. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, that's, uh, that's very true. And some of the ones that got those PPP loans um, may not have used the funds that will get, give them the forgiveness percentages that they need. And if that's the case, they may end upside down uh, with that kind of a scenario as well. So. Right. Now, Bill, you mentioned earlier this, this, uh, this new, what's called uh, subchapter five that came out of the CARES Act. Um, talk to us a little bit more about that. You know, first, what a chapter 11 typically is. And then now, now with this chapter five, what is that and how is it different from an eleven? Well, a Chapter 11 is, is basically a business that goes into reorganization. The owner retains control of the business. He operates as if he was not in bankruptcy, but he is governed by a number of rules and uh, regulations to keep, um, keep things uh, straight between debtors and not give any one debtor uh, an advantage over the other. The difference between a Subchapter 5, now Paul Bear is a uh, a well-known bankruptcy attorney here, and, and I talked with him just a few days ago about this since he is the only um, bankruptcy attorney up here who's actually filed one. So he uh, he gave me some pretty good insights as to the mechanics of it, not not the legalities of it so much. And that's you know I, I have to leave it at that because as uh, working with Chapter 11s, I deal with the mechanics and getting the owners uh, going on the right path for confirmation. So uh, with that in mind, um, a, a Chapter 5 is basically a streamlined Chapter 11. There's a lot of technical things that were taken out of 
of it, which would reduce the cost to um, uh, companies that had to file bankruptcy. Uh, so once once that's done, uh, typically a Chapter 11 would would uh, cost maybe fifty thousand dollars when it was said and done. Now we're talking ten or fifteen thousand dollars. So now it makes it more uh, cost effective for smaller the smaller businesses to go ahead and do that. Now in a in a Chapter 11, I remember talking with you about this as well. Um, when you file a, a plan to reorganize um, with the with the bankruptcy court, the creditors had to be okay with that plan, right? Right, and they, and they still do to a certain degree. Okay. Um, <clears throat> One of the things is that the U.S. trustee in Chapter 11's monitored the case, and in, in, in Subchapter 5's, a, um, a, a trustee is uh, hired, uh, and they're appointed by the court, and there's, uh, I believe, two of them up here in the Western District that have been approved to do that, but they only do work when, they, when it's necessary, so the, so the expenses uh, are quite a bit less uh, where uh, you had the, the fees, quarterly fees from the bankruptcy court in, in a normal chapter 11. So those have been eliminated. So okay. that streamlines the cost. The, um, the When you file for your plan, you have to file your plan within 90 days instead of going through what could take as long as a year to file a plan. So that streamlines the whole process, which automatically cuts your attorney fees down and um, accounting fees for my consulting fees okay. for some position. Right. And then Bill, um, ex explain to our audience now, um, if somebody is a small business owner and this is something they, they fear they might have to do coming, coming into recovery at the end of this pandemic, um, why did they need you in this process? You've got the, you've got the bankruptcy attorney, right? Um, right? Can they just do this through their accountant or would they need somebody like you to help them with it? Well, typically, <clears throat> the accountants don't uh, really understand um, how bankruptcies work, um, and and most of them don't even uh, won't do it for the, for that um, part of it. So, where I fit in is I come in and we we calcu calculate basically whether or not a bankruptcy is feasible and a reorganize reorganization is feasible and and a business plan that that will will project down the road for that particular business to successfully succeed in a bankruptcy. Um, most CPA firms, although you know they have the capability of doing it, are just not familiar with it and, and really don't uh, wanna be revolt, uh, involved with it. Now, what does happen is at the end of the bankruptcy and once they're confirmed out, they get turned back over to their CPA uh, uh, automatically for them to continue on doing business with them. And I, and I do talk to the CPAs in terms of telling them what they need to do to make sure that the plan payments are made. Got it, got it. Now, Bill, something else we, we talked about that I think is real pertinent, pertinent for our audience to, to know is uh, uh, what came out of the CARES Act as far as uh, SBA financing goes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, <clears throat> um, the, I, apparently the, uh, the new, uh, is the new law that has just passed uh, makes it a little bit more flexible. Um, you can apply up to June 30th for your PPP loan if you need to. And um, uh, it gives you 12 weeks to um, uh, get everything in uh, after that. And apparently it went, uh, the payoff was a two year payoff, which was pretty quick, because it has now been extended to five years. Okay. So they still are available. They still are out there. Uh, people just need to get with their banks. And if their banks are just too busy where they can't get to them, there are other online platforms that do uh, PPP loans. Okay. Now there was and another probably, provision. I, I can tell them who they are. So. Okay. Now there was another provision that came out of the CARES Act, right? That um, if you had an existing SBA loan already or a new one, I think it's some date in September, um, they, you, you could have like six months of payments free. If right. Okay. Well, that has been extended to a year. Okay. So you can defer your payments in, in the PPP up to a year now. And now, now you, you said a key term there, you said defer the payments, right? So that's, yes. so the it's payments just, 
Yeah, it's deferred. It, it doesn't mean that you get out of paying it. It just means that it's deferred for up to 12 months and then you still have the, you know, the five years that you have to pay it back in. Is there any provision in there that talks about um, uh, payments being forgiven for a period of time? The forgiven part is for if you have the payroll, uh, your payroll and um, utilities, mortgage payments or lease payments, uh, those can be forgiven if you don't exceed 40% of the loan. Okay. Now, I, I thought I saw, and I think it was even an article that you had passed on to me, um, there was a way they were doing this uh, SBA financing to actually cover their down payment on a, like a, let's say a new business buy. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Well, it's, it's a little bit of a marketing strategy in, in respect in that SBA loans, typically you can go up to 110%. And so basically what you're doing is borrowing uh, your funds up to that 110%, but, but it will cover the six months worth of deferred payments for you if you only borrow, you know, the, the certain percentage or put some percentage down. Gotcha. So it kind of works that way. Gotcha. Now, just a just a tidbit. I know, uh, you know, something else that came out of that CARES Act is uh, um, they're allowing people to basically borrow from their IRA um, up to a hundred thousand dollars. I I know they have to do it in this year by the end of the calendar year, and then they have three years um, by which to just pay it back with uh, with no penalties. Yeah, like liken it to like an IRA rollover. There's no tax consequences if they get it paid back within that three-year period. That's correct. Yeah, I thought that might be valuable to somebody who maybe has a, a small business out there. They they're trying to get from point A to point B. They lo and behold, they have this IRA over here. They they haven't been old enough to actually pull from it. Uh, maybe they're under age 59 and a half, and there's a penalty. But now they can maybe tap those resources. Uh, for a period of time to get through this pandemic and then just simply once they get rolling, you know, try to pay it back in the three year period. Yeah. Actually, I, I, from my personal perspective, I think that's really a, a good idea to do if, if you have the funds in your IRA and the ability to do that so you don't get caught up in some of these uh, penalty traps. Yeah. Um, go on. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about it, Bill, is they, you know, in true fashion, they made it a little bit complicated. Um, in the year that, you know, the money's borrowed, it basically becomes a, 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 a taxable event, right? And then what they do is you have to basically, once you pay the IRA back, you have to go back and amend a return and get your money back. So, oh, okay. you know, and, and then like, let's say you're somebody that wanted to pay it back over a three-year period. Um, now you have to amend all three of those returns, those three years of returns you had to get the, the get your payment back. So get the full benefit. Yeah. Typical IRS fashion, they 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 made made something really nice, easy, and then they find a way to complicate it, right? Yeah, they all do. <laughs> yeah. Now you mentioned you work with Paul Bear. There's a um, uh, you also work with other uh, bankruptcy attorneys as well, right? Right, yeah. Um, Wally Tuttle and uh, Mike Corcoran are a couple of Mike I work with quite a bit these days, and um, you know they're all they all have been in, in the area for quite a while. Uh, they all are very familiar with uh, subchapter 11s, uh, chapter 11s, and subchapter fives. Um, so um, these are all very knowledgeable people, and they are someone that you I would use as a resource for for right. an attorney for this. If you're retiring soon, it's likely you have many decisions ahead of you. One of the larger ones is Social Security. How are you going to take it? Are you going to take it early? Are you going to take it at your full retirement age or maybe even delay it? Social Security needs to be viewed as an asset. If you live a long life, it's likely you can collect a large sum of money over time with those payments directed to you. How though folks misjudge Social Security commonly is how it's taxed. How are you going to pay tax on that for the rest of your life? And it's important to factor that in when to take it. And also paired with your other assets you may have, it may make great differences as well. If you don't have a Social Security tax plan built into your retirement, it's extremely important and could cost you thousands over your lifetime if done improperly. We would love to sit down with you here at Centennial Wealth Advisory and talk through what that looks like on a larger scale and see if we can help you have a successful retirement. 
What can Retirement Analyzer do for you? Retirement Analyzer is a software tool that can help you prepare today for your financial future. You've worked hard to save for your retirement, but as you near your retirement, you may have concerns. Have I positioned my retirement savings wisely? Have I saved enough for retirement, and will my savings last throughout my lifetime? What impact could inflation have on my future expenses? What if I suffer a long-term illness? Will I have enough money to cover my medical care expenses and still be able to meet my other financial obligations? Could changes in the income tax rates disrupt my retirement strategy? There's no need to be in the dark as you prepare for your retirement. Retirement Analyzer can help you find answers to all these questions and more. The first step is providing us with information on your financial assets, the type and current value of those assets, as well as your sources of income. Then, we work with you to identify your expected expenses in retirement. This will include a discussion of the lifestyle you envision in retirement, travel, a summer residence, whatever you dream your retirement will be. We'll input the information you provide us into the Retirement Analyzer, and in a very short time, we'll have reports that show us the percentage of assets currently in high-risk vehicles, as well as the percent in lower-risk products. Retirement Analyzer enables us to project your income from year to year in your retirement and see how long your retirement savings may last. As we change the conditions of the report, delaying your retirement date, including costs for long-term care, adjusting the expected tax rate, or adjusting your retirement strategies, we can see how changes in these variables may impact your income in retirement and the longevity of your retirement savings. Let the Retirement Analyzer help you test drive your retirement strategy today, because the time to discover the bumps in the road is not once your trip through retirement has begun. Contact our office today to schedule an appointment for your Retirement Analyzer review. If you're retired or soon to be retired, let us help you plan to retire well. Centennial Wealth Advisory specializes in retirement planning and has offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. We'll never pressure anyone to become a client. Our goal is to inform and educate. Simply attend one of our live events or schedule a meeting at one of our Northern Michigan office locations for a free, no obligation retirement review. Listen, markets are cyclical. You'll have the long periods where the economy is in expansion and then it's typically followed by contraction. What things go up and sometimes things go down. That's the way the markets roll. But what, we, what is not acceptable is when, when there's clear evidence that the market is maybe heading into recession or a slowdown and most advisors are sitting back saying, hey, just stay the course. Listen, most are trained to be, follow what's called a buy and hold strategy. They figure that if they just get you well diversified, then when you hit periods like that, you should just hold the line, right? Unacceptable. If you look back in 2008 when the market dropped to half its value, it took almost five, six years to get back to, to where you were at. And if you're somebody near retirement, in, re, in retirement, possibly taking income from that portfolio, that's not going to work. So when there's clear evidence that we're entering into recession, we believe adjustments are necessary. So I encourage you, when times are good right now, take the opportunity, give us a call, let us sit down with you, see how you're positioned to make sure that that can't happen to you. We look forward to helping you plan to retire well. Are you drawing closer to retirement or already retired? Do you feel confident that you have a plan in place for your retirement? At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we believe there are a number of areas within your retirement plan that must be working together. It's very important that you have a long-term income plan. You don't want to run out of money in retirement. 
and we believe that tax planning should go hand in hand with your income planning. So we have our very own accountant on the team to assist you. We also believe that you need to have your estate planning in order to ensure that your assets are left behind to your loved ones and or charities. Along with that comes insurance planning, whether that's life or health. Along with all of this obviously comes your investment planning, which you need to have confidence will help you accomplish your goals and objectives. As you can see, there's a number of areas that you need to be taking into consideration when it comes to your retirement planning. We'd love the opportunity to share with you how we approach all of these areas within your retirement plan. Please call the number on your screen. Yeah, so uh, Bill, I can't stress this enough, you know, for, for that small business person out there who's maybe that business that's fallen through the cracks or they've seen a, a, a major impact on their business through this pandemic, maybe they've been able to get through. Coming to the other end of this, trying to reopen, re-enter, um, I, I almost liken it to the fact, you know, they, they, they may need a new team, you know. Um, if, they, if they have their uh, an accountant that's not... Um, then one that really do a lot of business consulting with them. Uh, maybe they've just been their guy to kind of crunch their numbers and do their taxes. Um, I, I would dare say this is a time to reassess uh, who, they're, who they're working with right now. Now, you know, as you're aware, I've had my own tax and accounting practice for over 25 years, so I've got extensive knowledge in, in taxation. Um, I've, I've done a lot of business consulting over the years, it, it is you as well. Um, I've been doing financial services, financial planning now for over 20 years. So I, you know, th that experience goes a long way in trying to help and consult a small business and basically reopening, mm -hmm. having people like me, yourself, working for them as a team and, mm -hmm. and helping them get back up is very, very important. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, actually, I worked with uh, several uh, CPA firms. Uh, that have had clients that got themselves in a bit of a spot and we've had to put them in chapter 11 and we make that transition as smooth as possible. Um, I'm not here for long term. I'm here just to get you through the bankruptcy and then put you back with, uh, you know, your CPA that you've been uh, involved with for years and um, that you know and you trust. And um, so we work with them pretty, pretty well. Uh, and making sure that they understand what has to be done afterwards and what's going to need to be done going forward. Yeah, and I think, Bill, you know, um, we, we talked about this, you know, you know, obviously, you, you know, where you want to concentrate a lot of your businesses is, is helping businesses sell, you know, getting them positioned appropriately. And I know we've talked this about this before, having that conversation with them um, even before they decide to sell sometimes is advantageous, right? Absolutely, because, um, you know, like I said, the, the, the folks that are, are thinking about uh, retiring in the next two, three years, um, it's, it's going to be uh, stressful for them to reboot and reopen their business. And maybe they find themselves in a position of, uh, uh, over you know, being overextended. So it, it really, it could be part of the, the, the bankruptcy could be part of the uh, buy sell of the business. So once we come in and we kind of assess it and, and they indicate that that's what they want to do in the next year or two, the, the bankruptcy plan or the plan for confirmation would be to sell the business by reducing the debt where necessary so that they get some, uh, some equity of their business back at some point. Right. Yeah, you know, my interest, Bill, I always like working with entrepreneurs. Um, you know, entrepreneurs have always been very good about um, th their own business that they're in. You know, they're usually very good at what they do. Um, and it's a reason they were in business doing what they were doing. Um, but, they're, but most of their investment went back into their best investment in those years. And, you know, when they're getting ready to sell, as you're aware, it, they're entering a whole new transitional period because the business has always provided all their income. Now they've got to, you know, sell that business at an appropriate amount. And then, now they've got to take that money and turn it into an income stream for themselves in retirement. So, you know, I dare say, you know, when somebody's looking and working with you, looking to possibly sell their business, I, I think that's a really good time for them to connect with a financial advisor and kind of work in that plan out as well. It is. And, 
it, it's also good for the buyers. And I think we need to talk about that for a second because a business coming out of bankruptcy, it's kind of like uh, blessed by the judge, if you, so to speak, in that um, no one can come back on that business because the plan has been put in place. And um, so it, it, makes it, it makes it easier for a buyer to know that when he's buying that asset, that it's, it's protected against uh, past uh, creditors. Yeah. You know, the other thing I, 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 I dare say, and I know a lot of the CPAs try to help with this part too, is, is just the taxation of that sale, you know, and trying to minimize that as, as best as possible. You know, I, it was so disheartening over the years talking to people. They, um, you know, worked this business, grew it. Uh, now it's a it's a it's a lump sum amount that they think they can sell it for. And lo and behold, they had a partner there they never knew they had, Uncle Sam, who's there wanting their share, and they never did one thing, right? Right. Yeah. That that needs uh, that's a very important part once you have the buyer and seller together, have a meeting of the minds, and, and make sure that everybody's on board with. Uh, making the tax consequence of, uh, work with the sale itself. So, so Bill, um, g give me a profile of somebody right now that you're, you really think should be giving you a call right now. I mean, you know, give me that business scenario they're looking at that, you know, um, sooner than later should be at least giving you a call and talking to. Well, somebody that's been shut down for, um, for a period of time, uh, someone who's uh, three years to now who would like to retire and sell their business and, and try to pull their equity out is, is probably the, the right person um, to call. Now, individuals that are uh, younger and who don't necessarily want to sell their business, but if they're overextended, uh, those are the folks that, that be, need to be giving me a call so that we can get them on the right path so that they can build the equity back into their business. Okay. And Bill, just for our viewers sake, I'm going to, I'm going to post that phone number right on the, on the, on the, on the show there so they can call you if they like. Bill, I, I just want to thank you for uh, being part of the show today. You know, when we got talking about this pandemic and small business, you know, I, I felt compelled to just, you know, put a whole show together for it because I, I know there's got to be some of those people out there. Um, they're probably wondering, if there's anybody that could be a resource and you are certainly a valuable resource that could uh, help them. And I, I believe myself could be a valuable resource in helping them as well with the experience I've had. So again, thank you for uh, uh, being on the show. Um, I'd like to have you back sometime if, if we got some new stuff maybe we could share. Um, who knows, I don't think this is all over and there's more stimulus money coming. So we'll see what that looks like, right? Yep, thanks for having me. Yep, thank you. And viewers, thank you for joining us this week. Uh, I hope you found this valuable. If there's any questions you have, uh, certainly give us a call. We'd be, be glad to help. Thank you.